guys and welcome to our 13th episode. Today we're going to be studying the story of Ruth as discussed in Ruth 1 through 4. This is part 2 of a three-part series, so if you haven't seen part 1, make sure you watch that one first. In this episode, we'll cover chapter 2 and part of chapter 3. We start off in chapter 2 verses 1 through 13. Now Naomi had a kinsman of her husband, a man of great wealth, of the family of Elimelech, whose name was Boaz. And Ruth the Moabitess said to Naomi, Please, let me go to the fields and glean among the ears of grain after one in whose sight I may find favor. And she said to her, Go, my daughter. So she departed and went and gleaned in the fields after the reapers. And she happened to come to the portion of the field belonging to Boaz, who was the family of Elimelech. Now, behold, Boaz came from Bethlehem and said to the reapers, May the Lord be with you. And they said to him, May the Lord bless you. Then Boaz said to his servant, who was in charge of the reapers, Whose young woman is this? The servant in charge of the reapers said, She is the young Moabite woman who returned with Naomi from the land of Moab. And she said, Please let me glean and gather after the reapers among the sheaves. Thus she came and has remained from the morning until now. She has been sitting in the house for a little while. Then Boaz said to Ruth, Listen carefully, my daughter. Do not go to glean in another field. Furthermore, do not go on from this one, but stay here with my maids. Let your eyes be on the fields which they reap, and go after them. Indeed, I have commanded the servants not to touch you. When you are thirsty, go to the water jars and drink from what the servants draw. Then she fell on her face, bowing to the ground, and said to him, Why have I found favor in your sight that you should take notice of me since I am a foreigner? Boaz replied to her, All that you have done for your mother-in-law after the death of your husband has been fully reported to me, and how you left your father and your mother and the land of your birth and came to a people that you did not previously know. May the Lord reward your work and your wages be full from the Lord, the God of Israel, under whose wings you have come to seek refuge. Then she said, I have found favor in your sight, my Lord, for you have comforted me and indeed have spoken kindly to your maidservant, though I am not like one of your maidservants. At this point, Ruth and Naomi had to find somewhere to get food when Naomi offers to go get it. She goes to the field that just so happens to belong to a man named Boaz to gather crops for her and Naomi. God had blessed him greatly because he was a man of great wealth. When he sees her, he is kind to her and talks to her. It turns out that later on, he would play a much bigger part in her life. When we obey God's commandments, he blesses us. Because of Boaz's obedience and being kind to other people, he is going to reap the great benefits from it. We continue on to finish chapter 2 and verses 14 to 23. At mealtime, Boaz said to her, Come here that you may eat of the bread and dip of your piece of bread in the vinegar. So she sat beside the reapers, and he served her roasted grain, and she ate and was satisfied and had some left. When she rose to glean, Boaz commanded his servants, saying, Let her glean even among the sheaves, and do not insult her. Also, you shall purposely pull out for her some grain from the bundles, and leave it so that she may glean, and do not rebuke her. So she gleaned in the fields until evening. Then she beat out what she had gleaned, and it was about an epa of barley. She took it up and went to the city, and her mother-in-law saw what she had gleaned. She also took it out and gave Naomi what she had left after she was satisfied. Her mother-in-law then said to her, Where did you glean today, and where did you work? May he who took notice of you be blessed. So she told her mother-in-law with whom she had worked, and said, The name of the man with whom I worked today is Boaz. Naomi said to her daughter-in-law, May he be blessed of the Lord, who has not withdrawn his kindness to the living and to the dead. Again, Naomi said to her, The man is our closest relative. He is one of our closest relatives. Then Ruth the Moabitess said, Furthermore, he said to me, You should stay close to my servants until they have finished all my harvest. Naomi said to Ruth, her daughter-in-law, It is good, my daughter, that you go out with his maids, so that the others do not fall upon you in another field. So she stayed close by the maids of Boaz in order to glean until the end of the barley harvest and the wheat harvest, and she lived with her mother-in-law. 
Naomi is overjoyed that Ruth had met Boaz because he was their family's kinsman redeemer. If a man in the family died, it was the kinsman redeemer's job to marry the widow that was left. He was then supposed to treat that family as his own and protect everyone in it. Naomi hopes that because of Boaz, Ruth would be able to have a husband and a family. She no longer would be treated at the lowest position because having no husband or kids was not accepted in that time. Now we begin chapter 3 in verses 1 through 11. Then Naomi, her mother-in-law, said to her, My daughter, shall I not seek security for you, that it may be well with you? Now it is not Boaz, our kinsman, with whose maids you were. Behold, the winnow's barley at the threshing floor tonight. Wash yourself, therefore, and anoint yourself, and put on your best clothes, and go down to the threshing floor. But do not make yourself known to the man until he has finished eating and drinking. It shall be when he lies down that you shall notice the place where he lies, and you shall go and uncover his feet and lie down. Then he will tell you what you shall do. She said to her, All that you say I will do. So she went down to the threshing floor and did according to all that her mother-in-law had commanded her. When Boaz had eaten and drunk and his heart was merry, he went to lie down at the end of the heap of grain, and she came secretly and uncovered his feet and lay down. It happened in the middle of the night that the man was startled and bent forward, and behold, a woman was lying at his feet. He said, Who are you? And she answered, I am Ruth, your maid. So spread your covering over your maid, for you are a close relative. Then he said, May you be blessed of the Lord, my daughter. You have shown your last kindness to be better than the first, by not going after young men, whether poor or rich. Now, my daughter, do not fear. I will do for you whatever you ask, and all my people in the city will know that you are a woman of excellence. Boaz and Ruth got to know each other a lot better in this time. Naomi knew that Ruth would be able to find rest in Boaz if they had gotten married. In this case, he was responsible to continue the family by marrying the widow. If he did not, Elimelech's line would have perished. When Ruth lies at Boaz's feet, in those times this was meant as a gesture of complete submission. Servants would lie at their master's feet, so when Ruth did this, we see that she was truly humbled. Everything Ruth did in regards to her relationship with Boaz showed total humility. We can guess there was a pretty big age gap between the two of them by the way he says he didn't think they would be in any type of romantic relationship because of their ages. Naomi's plan for Ruth worked. Ruth obeyed both Naomi and God and is now in a really good position. But there's still more to this story. You can continue watching in part three, but that's all for this episode. Thank you so much for watching and have an amazing day. Bye.